Hello, and welcome to my midlife crisis. I mean, YouTube channel. My name is Charles Bliss, and I'm a psychedelic journalist from Norwich, UK. In this video, my first ever video, I'm going to outline my plans for the channel so you know what to expect, and see if you'd like to come along for the trip. Let's go. Last year, I launched a blog and newsletter at www.charlesbliss.com. On my website, I report on the scientific, political and cultural impact of psychedelic compounds, which are undergoing a research renaissance, demonstrating that drugs like lysergic acid diethylamide, commonly known as LSD, and psilocybin, the psychoactive ingredient in magic mushrooms, have positive mental health effects on depression, PTSD and end-of-life anxiety. I decided to launch the website on the 19th of April 2022, an important date in the psychedelic calendar known as Bicycle Day. This was the day that Albert Hoffman, a Swiss chemist working at Sandoz Laboratories in Basel, embarked on the first full-blown acid trip. In 1943, Hoffman ingested 250 micrograms of a chemical called LSD-25 that he had synthesized to help women in childbirth. In his lab notes, he recorded the peculiar sensations he began to experience before his assistant Susie Ramstein accompanied him on a bicycle ride to his house, where he was overwhelmed by visual distortions, paralysis, terror, and demonic possession. In his book, LSD, My Problem Child, Hoffman wrote, I was seized by the dreadful fear of going insane. I was taken to another world, another place, another time. My body seemed to be without sensation, lifeless, strange. Was I dying? After a doctor's examination found no abnormal symptoms except for extremely dilated pupils, Hoffman's horror receded and gave way to gratitude as his mind capsized into a synesthetic reverie. Now, little by little, I could begin to enjoy the unprecedented colours and plays of shapes that persisted behind my closed eyes. Kaleidoscopic, fantastic images surged in on me, alternating, variegated, opening and then closing themselves in circles and spirals, exploding in coloured fountains, rearranging and hybridising themselves in constant flux. In the afterglow the next morning, Hoffman noted a profound sense of renewal and well-being. He said the world was as if newly created. Hoffman's eureka moment and the six kilometre bike journey became a seminal point in psychedelic folklore. It was the acid creation myth, and I found it fitting to launch my website on the anniversary of the founding chapter of modern psychedelic culture and research. I recently started writing the manuscript for my first book. The book is about three topics, the Beatles, psychedelics, and death. But why these three? I chose psychedelics because that's the area of journalism that I specialize in. It's a fascinating field that's exploding with interest. The psychedelic healthcare company Psych recently claimed that the legal psychedelic healthcare market could be worth more than three billion by 2026. And the American Medical Association just predicted that most US states will legalize psychedelics by 2037. We need rigorous journalistic analysis supported by data as these drugs hit the mainstream. I chose the Beatles because I love their music and the way that makes me feel. I'm a self-confessed Beatle maniac, but the boys are also a perfect jumping off point for psychedelic journalism. The band is synonymous with the psychedelic revolution of the 1960s because of their experimentation with LSD and how it informed their music and their spirituality. But they also have a continuing influence on the psychedelic field today, as their music is used in playlists as patients undergo psychedelic assisted therapy. Lyrics from Tomorrow Never Knows the closing track on 1966's Revolver are often quoted as flight instructions to help patients undergoing psychedelic assisted therapy to navigate novel terrains of consciousness. Turn off your mind, relax, and float downstream. It is not dying. In fact, John Lennon lifted these lyrics from the Psychedelic Experience, a manual based on the Tibetan Book of the Dead by Timothy Leary, Richard Alpert, and Ralph Metzner. And I chose death because this is one of the main focuses of psychedelic assisted therapy. Studies from Dr. Roland Griffiths at the Johns Hopkins Psychedelic Research Unit involved administering psychedelics like psilocybin to terminally ill cancer patients. It's thought that the loss of ego that can occur during psychedelic assisted therapy gives rise to a kind of death rehearsal or mystical experience in which the boundaries of the self dissolve and new perspectives on life are attained. My book will ask questions like, how can psychedelic assisted therapy help us confront mortality? Can we cure existential distress? Does love transcend grief? 
There are innumerable books about the Beatles on almost every conceivable topic, from songwriting, fashion and religion, to drugs, conspiracy theories, and solo careers. But there is no in-depth publication on the Beatles and death, so my book will take the form of what I'm calling an eschatological history of the Beatles. The narrative of the Fab Four is littered with incredible stories of people who died in dramatic circumstances or much too young, from Paul's mother, Mary, who died of breast cancer, John's mother, Julia, who died in a traffic collision, their original bassist, Stuart Sutcliffe, who died aged just 21 of brain hemorrhage, their manager, Brian Epstein, who died at the age of 31 of an accidental overdose, their road manager, Mal Evans, who died by being shot to death by the LAPD, and there are many, many more. Maybe I've always had a kind of morbid fascination with the Beatles. As a child, I pinned to my bedroom wall a facsimile of the front page of a newspaper from the day that John Lennon died. In Tune In, the first volume in his epic three-part biography, All These Years, Mark Lewison calls the Beatles a genuine ultimate, indisputably the biggest and best band in the history of rock and roll. Death is another genuine ultimate, a universal guarantee that we'll all have to face at some point. But death is still a taboo subject. I want this book and this channel to explore how death is just another part of life and that talking about it doesn't have to be depressing or dark. It can also be fun, playful, colorful, and meaningful. I'm older now than John, Paul, George, and Ringo were when the Beatles broke up, so I figured I can't wait any longer to write my first book. This channel will document my writing progress and provide entertaining educational videos of historic and cultural interest about the Beatles mythology, psychedelic research and death studies. I want to use this channel as a method for keeping myself accountable by publishing regular content, sharing my writing as a book takes shape and keeping myself engaged and in love with the work. It reminds me of a quote from Lebanese writer Khalil Gibran. And what is it to work with love? It is to charge all things your fashion with the breath of your own spirit and to know that all the blessed dead are standing about you and watching. If that sounds like fun, and you'd like John, Paul, George and Ringo to help cure your fear of death, I invite you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow updates by signing up to my newsletter, Afterglow, in my website, link in the description. I'll see you next time. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles!